had several different ways I wanted to go with this subject, but hope is the Lord that I can bring forth something that's edifying to us. Uh, the subject, if, I have, if you have a subject for a title for this morning's lesson, is casually strayed from God. Casually, what does it mean to be casual? Strayed. Relax. Just kind of go easily into it. Uh, and, and, and I'm going to look at that casually strayed. The main thing is strayed or going astray from God. <clears throat> There's a story of of a, that was told about a woman drifting uh, uh, that stray means to drift or to err or to fall away or wander off all these are synonyms telling about but Janice now she did the same thing that the story I read I, I, I said Janice didn't you uh, didn't you uh, drift away one time and she said what and I said and we, uh, they got talking to her I said, uh, did you drift at the beach one time? She said, yeah. Well, she had drifted away. She had went down to the beach. I think it was Fernandina, wasn't it, Jenna? Fernandina Beach. And as she was there, she, uh, her and her friend got a little raft. And you blow up. Flimsy yeah. ones, you know. Flames. Well, Janice had got on one, and Sandy got on one, her friend. And they, before they knew it, they were drifting out too far. And that's the way we are in our life, in our spiritual life. Sometimes we drift out a little too far. Well, she panicked, which I would have too. I mean, she was getting farther and farther out. And uh, after a while, nobody sees you on the land and you eventually it could be devastating. So that's what I want to look at, the how that sometimes we just casually drift away or go astray uh, uh, deviate. I mean, there's all kinds of words for it. Drifting away in a, in a spiritual way. <clears throat> turn to, uh, if you would, turn to Genesis chapter 13. And think about how that Lot drifted away. In Deuteronomy chapter 13, I know, excuse me, Genesis 13. I said Deuteronomy. Genesis chapter 13. Uh, Brother David, would you read, start reading there? I want us to look at that, especially around the 13th verse there. Where do you want to start reading? Verse 13. 1. 1. Yeah. And Abram went up out of Egypt, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot with him into the south. And Abram was very rich in cattle and silver and in gold. And he went on his journey uh, from the south even to Bethel, to the place where his tent had been at the beginning between uh, Bethel and Hai, unto the place of the altar which he had made there at the first. And there Abram called on the name of the Lord. And Lot also which went with Abram had flocks and herds and tents. And the land was not able to bear them and they might, that they might dwell together for their substance was great, so that they could not dwell together. And there was a strife between the herdsmen of Abram's cattle and the herdsmen of uh, Lot's cattle. And the Canaanites and the uh, Perizzite uh, dwelt then in the land. And Abram said unto Lot, let, us, let there be no strife, I pray thee, between me and thee, and between my herdsmen and thine herdsmen, for we are brethren. Uh, is not the whole land before thee separate? Uh, separate thyself, I pray thee for me. Uh, if thou wilt take the left hand, then I will take the right. Or if thou depart uh, to the right hand, then I will go to the left. And Lot lifted up his eyes and beheld all the plain of Jordan. And it was well watered uh, everywhere before the, before the Lord destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, even the garden of the Lord, like the land of Egypt as uh, thou comest from Zoar. Then Lot chose him all the plain of Jordan, and Lot journeyed east, and there separated themselves the one from the other. Abram uh, dwelled in the land of Canaan, Canaan, and Lot dwelled in the cities of the plain, and pitched his tent towards Sodom. That's one of them. The seventh verse there, it said they had strife, and then 
Uh, can you see how that Lot was drifting away all the time? And, and he he first, his uncle was Abram, and they had strife against the herdsmen there, and they, getting, they, had, they were real wealthy, both of them. And, but it comes to a point, they had to split up. And it, Abram told Lot, you can what? Anywhere you want. You go to, if you go to the right, I'll go to the left. If you go to the left, I'll go to the right, and so forth. <clears throat> and Lot, what did he choose? He pitched his tent for Sodom. Now, men love darkness rather than they do light, don't they? The Bible tells us to not love the things of the world, but love the Father by any. And he, had, he was casually drifting away from what God would have him to do. He went into Sodom. And we all know what Sodom is. It's a, it was a wicked city, and, and God destroyed Sodom with fire. But that's how easy now, <clears throat> you know, the scripture says a little leaven, what? Leaven the whole month. What does that mean? That means if you take a, for taking a little bit of sin, and it's going to be like a cancer, get bigger and bigger at one day. So you see how that you can just casually blend into the world? Now a lot didn't think too much about that and uh, to start with, but he was drifting, like Janus was drifting out into the ocean, he was casually drifting away from God and didn't even realize it. That's how Satan is. Satan will just kind of make everything look good to you. He looks like an angel of light, doesn't he? It says there's no marvel for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Who's the true light? God. You can Satan will have us to drift off and think it's the right way to go. Well, sometimes we're like we're like that. Turn over to uh, the book of Isaiah. Sometimes God's people, well not sometimes, all the time God's people were considered to be as sheep or lambs, right? And we're talking about wandering, drifting, falling away, deviating, all these going astray. Well, then this verse I'm fixing to read to you is about going astray. It's the same thing as those other things we mentioned. It says in Isaiah 53, verse 6, all we not part of us, but all we, like sheep, have gone where? Astray. And have turned everywhere to his own way. We have become complacent, in other words, of the devil. We, we, we go our own way, don't we? We've all sinned, we've all fallen short, we've all gone astray, and even we forget God at times. Now you say, I never forget God. Thank you. Examine yourself and you'll see a different story. I know I go astray a lot of times. I went astray that time. I mentioned it before here when Dennis and I were coming from a football game over in Nashville, uh, Georgia. Our grandson was playing football and it was late and we got back. And we decided we'd just run into Burger King and get us a hamburger. Y'all remember me telling you about that? Well, I astray bad out there at Burger King. Now, let me explain one thing. We went in, I, she told me to go through the drive through I don't go through the drive through But anyway, she convinced me, and I made a wrong turn. I deviated off the wrong way. I eventually got straightened up, went through, got our hamburgers, and took off again. And Janice went to screaming and hollering, stop, stop, stop. And there's a bunch of cars coming toward me. I had a straight. I didn't hit US-1, but like I was supposed to go down and turn. I just shot across the thing, and uh, I was on the wrong side of the road. And cars were coming toward me, and I, I played it off like it didn't scare me, but I'm going to tell you now, it scared the car out of me. So I had deviated and went the wrong way. That's how quick we can go away in a spiritual way. So I don't want, I learned my lesson from that. I won't hopefully never do that again. But... We can go astray and forget God in a spiritual way. Turn over to uh, 
Jeremiah 6, 16. God's people go astray. We are like sheep that go astray. We, we, we. In, in uh, Jeremiah 6, 14, Brother Berger, you want to read? I can't see, Jerry. Okay, just read uh, Jeremiah 6, 14 through 16, or 18, or Okay, you can see how that they were on, they had strayed away from the what good way. They said peace, peace, when there wasn't no peace. And they had wandered off, far off from the old paths that God had set up. The old churches used to be considered as the old paths, the good way. Them paths have changed today, haven't they? The change has tremendously changed the way our society is today. We've gotten off the old, we have strayed, we have went far from those old paths. Uh, what is the way? Jesus Christ himself said in John 14, 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus is that way. There's two ways. There's a broad way, and there's a straight and narrow way. It's easy to go through the broad way and stray off and, and go away from the hard way that we are to do as being Christians and going into the kingdom. They, it's easy for all of us to stray away or deviate or casually go from God and go the broad way which leads to what? Destruction. Perish. So we need to stay on the good way and not go away, go astray. Uh, Psalms, Psalms uh, 25 10 says this all paths are always all paths of the Lord are mercy and truth all paths of the Lord are mercy and truth you know we got we get off course sometimes we got we got a duty to do every one of us have a duty or a job or something to do with the church. It may be just to call somebody, talk with them, visit them, or it may be to pray to somebody, but we all have a duty to do. And sometimes we get away from that duty that we're supposed to be doing. We stray off, and it's easier once you stray off and, and don't do your duty, then you get, get to the point where you don't want to do nothing. Is that the way it works? That's the way exactly the way it works. If we quit coming to church on Wednesday night, you know, it's all right. Miss once in a while. Ain't going to hurt nothing. But it, if you're not careful, each little step, and that's why you won't be here. We all have a duty to do, and we all sometimes we get off course in our action or our duty. <clears throat> we stray from our duty. Old Jonah himself was on a mid, mid cruise. I made a mid cruise. When I was in service, when I was in the Navy, I went, on, I went all over the Mediterranean. Well, old Jonah went all over the, he was to go all, on the vacation, so to speak. He even paid his own way to go. And he was told he had a duty to do. What was his duty? Preach. It's to preach, but Well, Jonah didn't want to preach at that point. He said, I'm going to do what I want to do. And he went on the cruise. Did he get on the boat? Yep. Did he wound up in hell? And that's how easy it is we can stray off from our duty to God and, and wind up in a hell on this earth. <clears throat> Jonah chapter 1, verse, 1, 1 through 3 says, If you know to do good, James 4, what did I say? James 4, 17? James and Jonah. 
John, John, we go James 4, 7, 14, I'm going to talk about. If you know to do good, then Jonah know to do good. Evidently, Jonah knew to do right, didn't he? But he decided he'd do what he wanted to. In that James 4, 17, I believe it is, it says, if you know to do good and you don't do it, then there's sin. The wages of sin is separation, or the wages of sin is death. Right? So Jonah strayed from his duty, found up hell, and he was separated from God. But thank God he gave him what? A second chance. Sometimes you don't get that second chance, do you? But God gave Jonah a second chance and he wound up going in to uh, to Nineveh and preaching them and they repented and such cloth and ashes. Uh, the prodigal son, Julius spoke about the pro- the two, pro- two sons, you remember last Sunday. The prodigal son, the one that went away, got the inheritance and went away, was he going astray from the house and his father? He was. All he could see is the glamour of the world. That's what, that's what he saw. And he would decide, and his brother did get angry, and, and uh, I don't get into all that. But the one, the the one that got the inheritance, he wanted to right then. He got it, and I'm sure he enjoyed it. it and it wound up eaten with the pigs or hogs or whatever. And then he came into himself. The Bible says, and when he came into himself. He had strayed bad. He had deviated off the course. He had went the wrong way instead of the good way. And Jonah, I mean, I, I keep getting going in my head. The prodigal son was headed back to the, he said, I just make me one of your hired servants. He said, I no, I don't deserve anything. Well, he, thank God he started coming back where he came into himself, what the Bible said. He came into himself. And that's what we need to do. When we out there stray, we need to get our focus back on Jesus and and come to yourself and go back to the Father and go back to the house, which to me represents the church. You may not say that, but I see that. But there's a prodigal son that did go astray. He wandered far off. We sing that song, Prone to Wonder. Lord, what? I feel prone to leave the one that I love. We prone sometimes to wonder or go astray or deviate. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I, I can picture it. Now, I may not explain it exactly the way I see it, but I, I just, I love nature. I, I was born and raised in hunting and fishing and all these things in the woods. And, I've seen birds do certain things. I've seen uh, all kinds of animals do certain things. But this one verse here, you can see in a picture in your mind if you love nature. It says in Proverbs 27, as a bird wandereth from her nest. He did what? Wandered from the nest. You see this in your mind, a little baby bird. Maybe he hadn't got all his feathers yet. He's in the nest. It says, as a bird wandereth from his nest, so is a man that wandereth from his place. You picture that. What is a what is a nest to a bird? A home, refuge, getting it. All birds don't have the same kind of nest. Big eagles make big old nests. Uh, little, old, little old birds make smaller nests. They're all different, but it's all their home their refuge, their safety. And sometimes it says, as a bird that wanders or goes away or deviates or goes astray from her nest to the refuge, so is the man that wanders from his place. What's the man's place? What do you picture as the man's place? The church? Can be. It can be the church. It can be the family, the home. Man is to walk that straight and narrow way and raise up his children and wife and, uh, with his wife and love her and so forth. They give back to 
But the main point is don't wander away. Because that roaring lion, the devil, is ready to pounce on that little bird if he wanders off from his refuge. So is that lion going to destroy us if we wander off from our place? So as a bird wanders from there, so the man wanders from his place. Second Peter 2.15 says, Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray. Which have forsaken the right way. Second Peter 2.15 Which have forsaken the right way and are gone astray following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, and love the wages of unrighteousness. Can we, want, can we love the ways of right unrighteousness. That prodigal son did. Jonah did. Can a church, can a church, right? Just read you on read. Uh, Revelation chapter 2, 1 through 5. And think about a church strayed or deviating, casually going away from God. He said, God says, I know you're a working church, but I got someone to get you. You have left your first love. Who is your first love? God. God. And the Bible tells us plainly that the commandments of God, all ten hang on two. And the first one is to love God with all your heart, soul, and mind. They weren't doing that. They had deviated. They had astray. They, they had left their first love. But that first love is to love God first. And then love your neighbors as yourself. So we, you see how that we go astray. Sometimes you might not, not think, well, I wouldn't stray. I go to church. I pay my tithes. I do all these things. Sometimes God isn't pleased to love. Sometimes our love waxes cold. But when Matthew 24 teaches us that your love can wax cold. When your love wax cold toward God, what have you done? You have departed. You have walked that broad way and forgot God. You know you can forget God? Turn over to Deuteronomy chapter 8. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Yes, you will read... Uh, Let me think for it says. Ten, I believe it is. Starting at verse ten. I ain't got no good room in this Huh? Yeah, start reading there. Do what? Forget not the Lord thy God. That, what verse is that? 11? 11. 11. Okay. Read, go ahead through 13 and think about that. Beware thou that thou forget not the Lord thy God, and not keeping his commandments, and his judgments, and his statutes, which I command thee to stay. Lest for thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwelt with therein. And when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, Thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is multiplied, then thy heart be lifted up, and thou forget the Lord thy God. Right, 
thought right there. The main point we try to cross it says we can forget God. We need to when you forget God, you go astray. The last one I want to go with is uh, Deuteronomy 28. <clears throat> Here is pronouncing Moses pronouncing about the cursings and the blessings. If you obey, you're blessed. And if you don't obey God, then you're cursed. And it says as it is this. I'll just start with verse 14. Well, first 15 verses it teaches about the blessings of God. And 15 through, on through the rest of it, it teaches about the cursings of God. There's a little verse there in, 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 in the 15th chapter that says a lot. It says in verse 15, but, but, this is as we told him, all these blessings you can get by obeying and the commandments and the doing God's will. And then it says in verse 15, but, it shall come and pass that thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, God observe and do all his commandments and the statutes, and I command you this day, and all these curses shall come upon thee. And then he says, curses, 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 curses. But the main point is, they were going to fall if they did not obey the word of God. Does America need blessing? Well, we're going to have to do what God says. We're going to have to obey Him. And I'm thankful that a lot, a lot of the speeches and all that Trump's done, I think he's a God sent man. Even he may not even know it, that he's a God sent. But I know he is stuck against the, the, the truth so, so far. And hopefully he'll continue. So, uh, there's a lot more I could go to, but I'm not going to just quit right here because it's time to quit. But you can go to 1 Timothy 4, 1 through 5 and see how the, you can stray and so forth. Uh, anybody got any questions?